everyone, it's Deb from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Saturday Night Live session. I hope we're doing okay out there. I can see that there's a bit of storm and carry on up in um, Queensland, Queensland which is supposed to have beautiful weather all the time, apparently, but it sounds like they lie. <laughs> anyway, I hope everybody is doing well and you've uh, all had a great weekend so far. Hey, Cheryl and... Uh, Jenny, good to see you. I'm getting the thumbs up from Chris. My health is good according to YouTube, so hopefully everything goes well tonight. Hey Janine, hey Joe, how are you guys? Michelle, good to see you here. Hey Carly, Di and Susie, Jane, it's really good to see you all. Nope, oh, this is not good. Already getting drop frames. All right, guys. Right, let's see how we go. We'll see how we go with this. I'm really hoping that uh, it behaves for us today. Um, I'm not in the mood, so it better be for good. <laughs> <laughs> You're all tired and cranky tonight. I'm, I'm all tired. I've spent the day at a colour workshop out near Campbelltown. I've only been home for a little while, so um, I'm a little un underprepared for this. <laughs> but hopefully we'll get through it. All right, so while we're not doing too badly, I might start this weave and uh, get this the, this bit over and done with, and hopefully it all holds out well for us. So I'll just flip this over to the other camera. Hey, Margaret and Megan, good to see you. Yeah, Joe, the workshop wasn't too bad. It was frustrating and exhausting, but it wasn't too bad. All right, I don't have a lot in the way of samples to show you because I was at the colour workshop today. Um, but I do have these ones here. So these are the kits that went out to the people that are part of our Mail Club. So this is Captive Zen, which is a weave that was done by Blue Buddha originally. Um, now the sizes I've used here, the bright aluminium, there's two sizes here. There's a 16 gauge AWG, which is 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. This ring here is the 4.25 mils, and we've also got 5.75 millimeter ID in the bright aluminium, and the anodized aluminium aluminium is 9.30 seconds, or 7.14 millimeters. So I've used the same size in the earrings. The earrings is just sort of like one unit with uh, a bead hanging off the end to give it a little bit of weight to help keep that unit all in place. Now I don't have any other sizes to show you, unfortunately, um, but this is this is quite a nice size for the bracelet um, and you can use the AA in there. I like the contrast of um, the AA. Alright, so I'll make a start on this for you. So as I said, we've got two sizes in bright aluminium and one size in anodized aluminium and we're sort of working in kind of like units we construct sort of units that look like these ones here out of our bright aluminium. So what you do is you take up, you need to close four small BA rings, which is the 4.25 mils, and you need to close two of our medium rings, which is the 5.75 mils, and you open up a small one. And our first step is to take our opened ring, get that out of the way, and on that you pop one of your medium rings. <clears throat> hey Brizzy, good to see you. Hey Kim. And two of the small rings that we just closed. Okay, so medium ring first and two of the small rings. So we're going to create some orbiting rings here. And to do that, we're going to grab hold of that medium ring there that's at the back. And we're just going to bring that up over the top, oops, try that again, up over the top of the opened ring, I'm going to put my pliers down, that'll be better. So it just slips over the top and orbits around the ring like that. Okay, and then what I like to do for the next one is I'm just going to reposition my pliers so that it comes in underneath that ring that we just orbited so that we hold our work like this. Just gives you a little bit more space to play with. 
and we're going to do the same again we're going to pop on a medium size uh, BA ring there the uh, 5.75 mil and then two of the small ones and again we're going to bring that large one up and over the edge of the ring so that it orbits okay so it looks like that and then we whoop, grab hold of our ring and we close it up and that produces one of our units Okay, so you want to do a couple of those to start with. So I'll do that again. Hey Sparky, it's good to see you. So taking up the small opened ring, we're going to pop on the larger of our BA rings first, one of those, and then two of the pre-closed small rings. And then while we're holding that, we're going to grab that larger ring that's there at the back Bring it up and over the edge of the opened ring so that we've now got an orbiting ring there. And then we're going to reposition our pliers to give us a little bit more space here. I'm trying to get as much space here as I can for the next lot of rings. And again, pop on the larger and then the two smaller ones. Grabbing the larger one, bringing it up and over the edge, and then coming in and closing that up. Okay, so you need to make up several of those little units to start with. It definitely helps to have the smaller, thinner jaws, Janine. It would be harder to do with uh, wide pliers. Um, and I find the uh, chisel nose comes in real handy in these sorts of weaves. So once you've got a handful of these little BA units made up, what we want to do then is grab <coughs> our anodized ring or our largest ring and we want to put it into our unit. Oops. So we want to hold our unit like this and we want to feed it through the two orbiting rings basically on one side of that middle small ring and then before we close that we want to grab up another unit and we want to do the same for it. So go through the two orbiting rings okay making sure it's sitting on the same side of that middle ring as your first one was and then you just close that up. Okay, so this is what we've got so far. So we just flip our work over and we want to put another anodized ring in the same path on the other side. So we got one on each side of that small center ring. Okay, so again, just feeding through the orbiting rings Okay, on both units and closing it up. Okay, so you can see that we've got two rings in there and they're sitting one on each side of these center small rings here. So we're just picking up the orbiting rings with the colored rings, one on each side of the small center ring. And then we just keep adding the length to the chain as we need it. So working off one end of the piece that we've got here, again we go pick up the orbiting ring, grab a new unit, pick up the orbiting rings, close it up. Okay, whoops, that's not closed so well. All right, flip them over and do the same on the other side. All right, 
And I'll just add one more unit because I've got one more made up. So picking up the orbiting rings, grabbing your new unit, feeding it through there as well. Okay, flipping your work over and feeding another anodized ring in, making sure it sits on the other side of the small bright aluminium ring. We want one anodized ring <coughs> on each side of the small rings there in the center. So you can see how we've got all those rings in place there. So do that for the length of your bracelet, whatever you need that to be. And then once you've done that, we want to come back in with our small rings. And this time we're going to join one ring, small ring from this side to one small ring on that side. We just simply do this. Okay, there's nothing tricky about that. It's still a bit loose at the moment. It will all tighten up and fit into place once we start adding more rings. So how you go about doing this is up to you, whether you slip all down one side or you flip it over and do the other side in that unit. Totally up to you. But as you add more rings to the length of the chain, um, you can see it all starts to tighten up nicely and it all sits well. So there's none of this flopping around that you can currently see. Okay, and then just do that for the length of your chain. So because that first one that goes in is a little bit loose, just keep an eye on that when you're tightening up on um, the subsequent pieces that you've all got it sitting nicely before you uh, feed uh, the ring and close the next ring up. Okay, but you can see how that's tightened up. So it's gone from this loose floppiness now to much tighter. And I'll just do the last ones. Okay. You can see this last one's sitting a bit funny, so we just want to make sure that's all in the right position. You can see here that it's slipped a little bit out of position, so we just want to wriggle that around until it's right. And then lock it all in place with the small rings. Okay, one more. And that's it. And that's it, we're pretty much done. So is that okay for everybody? Are they following it? It's, it's, it's fairly easy. It's just a little fiddly trying to get it all into place. But once you start locking all the rings in, um, it all starts coming together for you. But are we good? Easy? You like this one, Cheryl? That's good. <laughs> it's good on the big screen tonight. That looks good on the big screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, fabulous. All right, beautiful. And like I said, the earring is just uh, pretty much a single unit with a bead hanging off the end. I put the bead on there to give it a little bit of extra weight so that it hot, you know, locks everything into place. But you could hang scales or, or anything off the bottom of that that you liked. Okay. Thank you, Sparkies. I had a fabulous birthday. Thank you very much. The family spoilt me. It was really good to have them all here. All right, so is everybody cool with that? It sounds like you guys um, have got it. I'm sorry I don't have any other sizes to show you, but this is actually not a bad size for either the earrings or the bracelet. All right, did I miss any questions or anything, Chris? Uh, no, not really. Nothing? Um, no? You're all too clever for me tonight? 
Yeah, um, I think Janine was having some problems with how fiddly it was. Sparkies, you want to show you how to do the orbiting bit again? All right, I'll just have to prep some rings first. Okay. So you need to have, with your BA rings, you've got two sizes, a small, I'm, call, I'm going to call them small and medium, with the AA being the large size. Um, you need to close, I've got this to the other camera. You need to close up four of your small rings, two of your medium rings, and open up one of your small rings. Okay, so just get that done. All right, so once you've got the rings prepped, take up your single opened ring Onto that, pop on your medium BA rings, so the larger size of your BA rings, only one of those, and pop on two of the smaller ones. And then hanging on with your pliers and with your other hand, grab hold of the larger BA ring and just bring it up so that it slips over the top of the opening of your small ring, comes back down and you can see that it's orbiting the other rings there. Okay, so once you've done that, I like to reposition my pliers, grab it here underneath that orbiting ring. What I'm trying to do is open up as much space over here as I can get because I'm going to pop on another set of rings. So meet one medium sized ring, two small rings and do the exact same again. Grab that larger ring, bring it up over the top of the end so that it orbits the rings and then close your open ring up. Okay, So that makes your little orbiting unit and then you join all of those little units together as I was showing you. Uh, let me see, I've got a couple of rings here so I might as well do that. So just to continue down here we pick up the orbiting ring and then grab the orbiting ring on our new unit. Okay, close it up. Flip our work over and we put another one through the same space but this time on top of that middle joining ring there. Okay, so we've got one on each side of the BA rings. Put it through there. Okay. And then you just put your small ring through these ones to tighten it all up. Okay, is that good? Did that help, Sparkies? Okay. All right, hopefully that helped. Seeing a little bit of um, seeing a little bit of uh, drop frame rate here, but not too much. So I hope everybody uh, gets uh, good use of this tonight. All right, perfect, Sparkies. Yeah, look, it's it's. I did. I think I ended up marking it as an intermediate weave just because it was a little fiddly with the orbiting rings. Um, yeah, I did, but it's actually not too hard to do. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. <laughs> trade secrets yeah all right beautiful peeps um, is there anything I can help anybody with or anybody got any questions or anything they'd like to know about I mean we're coming to the end of the year so we're winding some things down and speeding other things up um, the first lot of advent calendars will go out will be posted out on Monday so that first lot of 22 that got sold out the other day will go out um, on Monday we will um, put the next lot up tomorrow. We've got another 21 boxes. So we've got another 21 advent calendars for sale tomorrow. I actually haven't picked a time. 
So keep an eye on um, our Facebook business page and I will post something there about the time. But probably something later in the afternoon, evening, because I had a few complaints about doing it so early in the morning. So if you missed out on the advent calendar run the last time, um, hang around and check it out. Yeah, Margaret, there's a second lot. Um, I managed to get another 21 boxes. I'm thinking somewhere, what do you reckon, Chris, around 7-ish on a Sunday evening? Yeah, like we'll try a different time to get yeah. more people. So 7-ish uh, sounds like a good time. So we're aiming for seven. If I change that, check out, keep an eye on the, the Facebook business page. I will um, put the time up there and if I change it, that's where it'll be. But I think, yeah, if we say seven on Sunday night, Aussie, yep. um, my time, okay? So I'm, I'm in New South Wales, so Australian, Eastern, in Eastern Daylight, daylight savings, savings Time. Sun. So for those that are in different time zones, you'll have to make the adjustment. The last lot sold out in nine minutes, guys. So if you really, really want one, um, hang around. And I won't be doing any more after this. And I would suggest, because these won't go out on Monday, the second lot won't go out on Monday. They'll go out later on in the week. And um, so I would suggest if you want it before December to uh, buy express shipping, to have any hope of it getting there in time if you want it open on the 1st of December. If that sort of thing doesn't worry you, that's fine. Just some people want to actually open it on the day. Um, mail club, for anybody that's for mail club, the kits would have normally been going out on Monday, this Monday, due to the fact that, well, we're running out of time, we've got advent calendars and all the rest of it, and we're not doing the live streams anymore. We're going to delay the kits for a week. So they will go out, not this not this Monday coming, which I think is the 19th, they'll go out the Monday after that. But because there's no live streams or anything like that, um, that it shouldn't be too much of a hassle for you guys. That just gives me a little bit more breathing space as I get the calendars done. Um, and I think that's probably it. Does anybody else have any questions or <laughs> you had a wicked dream? <laughs> wicked good or wicked bad? <laughs> At four thirty in the morning, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I mean I do ask if you did buy a um advent calendar in the first lot to, you know, let someone else have a go with the second lot, um, that would be appreciated. If we could all share, that would be nice. Yeah, there, is there is a limited number, and I'd like to see as many people as possible get to experience it. So, although I can't stop you, I do ask you to consider other people. Um, if you've already, if you were already lucky enough to get a box. All right, that beautiful. Right in the vintage park. Yeah, that would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michelle, that's a worry. <laughs> All right, um, I think, is that it? Anybody else? To the casino? <laughs> oh, good on, I've got to love her if that's what she was doing. <laughs> All right, um, Brizzy, the calendars are 47.50 plus yes, postage. Yes, I've posted the link. Oh, you've posted the, the link, yep. Yeah. So forty seven fifty plus there, plus postage, yep. May have to start a I'm actually Daryl, I'm actually gonna do something else next Christmas, I think. Hopefully. Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. I hope I'm better organised next if, year. If no one goes for any surgeries just beforehand. Yeah, that type yeah. Of stuff. If my husband doesn't, you know, pull the full drama queen. I've got the left one next year. And end up in hospital and, and all the rest of it, we'll be great. Hey, Sonia, good to see you. All right. All right, well, I think we're good then, guys. So next week is our last live stream for the year, and it will be our just our general chat and uh, giveaway session. Um, and then it'll be uh, the Christmas sale. So I hope you're all uh, getting your lists together for the Christmas sale. 
I could always have a rest for Christmas. That'd be lovely, Megan. After the sale, after, Christmas. after, after the sale, sale, I can have a rest. Well, a few days after the sale, I can have a rest. <laughs> Takes us a few days to get everything finalised. Though as tiring as this time of year can be, um, it's actually quite exhilarating as well. So you know, it's nice to be busy. It's nice to be busy. All right, darlings. Well. Next week you have an open day at the Whimsical Bee. That'd be you've got no idea how much I'd love to go to one of those open days. Um, but yeah. Flying down to Melbourne for an open day is just a little out of my budget at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to show you something. So I'm preparing the, the pieces of paper for the next lot of advent calendars. And um, you guys can see that. That's the ones that I've cut so far. And that's not all of them. That's probably about three quarters, do you think? Mm -hmm. It's about three quarters of what I need to actually cut. And then I need to mark these up and fold them. Um, so that's what I'm going to be frantically doing for the next couple of days. But that just gives you an idea of how much paper we go through. For only, this is only for 21 boxes. And I individually cut all of these myself. So yeah, good fun and games. Oh, you want me to show? Or one previously prepared. One previously prepared. What, you want me to open it up and show them? Oh, well, just on the outside. All right, let me, let me switch this over. Chris wants me to show off. So the second lot of boxes I got were Christmas-based. The first lot weren't particularly Christmas-based. So um, this is one of the boxes. And these ones are not quite complete yet, so... There's a little bit of something, something in there on the top for you, extra. <laughs> and then in there are all the goodies. So I've still got a couple of days to put together for the first lot of kits. And we have all different shapes. Some are thick, some are thin, some are heavy. Honestly, Brizzy, it tastes a little bit more... Um, Accuracy than what the kids will do. Precision. Yes. Precision. <laughs> precision. Um, my daughter offered to cut them out, but she's left handed in a house full of right handed scissors. Um, so, yeah. I actually have a guillotine, Jane, but I, I'm not a fan of them. Um, because paper, the papers move and things don't cut straight and. Mm, mm. Yeah, just as yeah. Yeah, Megan. Um, I just I put something on Netflix and I just sit here and I cut I cut and cut and cut last night until my hands hurt and then I stopped and um, this is why I want to try and come up with something else next <laughs> next year. It's oh, look, it's great. I love doing it, but it's really labour intensive. There has to be a smarter way of doing this that doesn't cost the earth. Mm, no, that was That's the other thing is trying to keep um, the cost of it reasonable. You like the uniforms? Uh, uniforms. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. I've been. I was tortured today in this colour workshop. Oh, they made me work. They made me work. Um, origami paper. Yeah. I look, I don't know, and I don't don't know from um, cost point of view. But that's all right. We'll work it out for next year. It's too late now. I have to run with what I what I know. Alrighty. I might have to go have another coffee. I might go to bed. Sounds like you need a lie down. I do. I do. Isn't that weird? The smallest thing out of your routine, for me anyway. All right, so if no one else, so yeah, just keep in mind, 7 o'clock Sunday night, so 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. I'll put, tw I've got 21 more boxes that I'll put up. And um, good luck. Something stronger. What to drink? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Got all the makings for mudslides bought for me for my birthday, so mm. might go and have to have one of those. Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful people, thank you for coming along and putting up with my babble. I'm a little tired and I tend to babble a little bit when I'm tired. So I better go, better let you all go and enjoy the rest of your night. You could donut. Oh. Damn, Michelle, wish I'd known that earlier. I printed all these out. I actually went and grabbed their, um, what do you call them? Seamless um, 
wallpapers that I, yeah that I went and grabbed and, and resized and printed them all out and damn I wish I'd known that <laughs> <laughs> next time next time all right lovelies enjoy the rest of your weekend thank you so much for coming along and joining with us and um we will catch you hopefully through the week in social media otherwise we'll catch you here next week for a prize which i'll let you know next week but it is all right <laughs> take care Mwah! bye